10,000 years ago, a deadly virus arose in northeastern Africa. The virus spread through the air, attacking the skin cells, bone marrow, spleen, and lymph nodes of its victims. The unlucky infected developed fevers, vomiting, and rashes. 30% of infected people died during the second week of infection. Survivors bore scars and scabs for the rest of their lives. Smallpox had arrived. In 1350 BC, the first smallpox epidemics hit during the Egypt-Hittite War. Egyptian prisoners spread smallpox to the Hittites, which killed their king and devastated his civilization. Insidiously, smallpox made its way around the world via Egyptian merchants, then through the Arab world with the Crusades, and all the way to the Americas with the Spanish and Portuguese conquests. Most likely it begins as an animal virus somewhere in Africa, the Middle East, or the Asian subcontinent. At some point, the virus makes the jump to the human population. We estimate we'd have to have hundreds of thousands of people before it could keep going. So we assume the spread to the human population did not occur until after the first agricultural settlements, maybe 10,000 years ago. The smallpox virus follows the population as it migrates. It spreads slowly throughout burgeoning human communities. The first tangible evidence of its deadly nature is found in the ruins of ancient Egypt. In 1898, an archaeologist uncovers the mummy of Pharaoh Ramses V, believed to have died around 1157 BC. That mummy has a rash, the distribution of which and the size of the pustules match uh, almost exactly that of smallpox in more, uh, more recent times. And so we think that is the first concrete evidence of the smallpox virus in humans. Vague descriptions of the virus appear in some early chronicles. In 430 BC, Greek historian Thucydides writes of a lethal pox-like illness that decimates the great city-state of Athens, causing the end of the Peloponnesian War. 165 AD. Roman centurions returning from Mesopotamia carry another pox-like illness to their capital city. The plague of Antonius rages for 15 years and kills an estimated three and a half to seven million people. The first full written record of a smallpox case is provided by a 9th century Persian physician, Razis. He describes a gruesome pathology that begins with a rash covering the body, then days later breaks out into tiny pus-filled pox. Blindness may result if the eyes are affected. If a patient is lucky, he is scarred for life. If not, he dies. This virus killed people by destroying internal systems. We could see what it was doing to the outside of the, the body, the skin. But in fact, the same thing was happening to the intestines, to the linings of uh, the lungs, and those kind of vital organs. So you'd have uh, the lining sloughing off, and uh, people simply uh, drowning, for example, in their own internal fluids. Early treatments for the virus variola, Latin for speckled, are varied and uniformly uncomfortable. The physician Razis recommends that victims should be bled to the point of fainting. Other therapies include opening the sores on the seventh day with a golden needle or drinking a potion of horse dung. 